Hi, this is Wallace from Capturing Reality. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a 3D model of this speaker using Reality Capture. You will learn the basic principles of photogrammetry and how to make a model. I'm going to be making the complete model, including the bottom, by combining two different captures. Every good model starts with good inputs. Reality Capture will take a huge range of different photos as inputs, everything from medium format to simply using your mobile phone. For this project, I'm going to go somewhere in the middle by using a small compact camera. I'm going to be using it on the JPEG setting at the highest resolution of 20 megapixels. If you're just starting out in photogrammetry, try to avoid scanning shiny objects or anything that won't stay still. What you're trying to achieve when taking photos for reality capture is sharp, low noise, evenly exposed photos. So if you're a creative photographer with a passion for high contrast, super grainy, shallow depth of field photos, this would be a great time to rein in some of that creativity. Try to avoid direct sunlight. Digital cameras just don't have enough dynamic range to get you the detail you need in both the shadows and the highlights. Overcast weather is great for photogrammetry. It's also important to remember not to pivot from the same position. Reality capture needs to gather 3D information. So if you take two photos from the same position, you're not giving the software any extra 3D information. It's the same as having one big photo taken from that position. Try to remember that if you were a cyclops, you would not have 3D vision. People often pivot when capturing trees and buildings because the subject does not fit into a single shot. But even in this situation, it's always good to move a tiny bit. For this model, I'm going to capture one side of the object, then flip it and capture the other side of the object. We need to be conscious of this when taking the photos. I'm going to start by doing a loop. And it's important to get as low as possible so the software can easily match the sides of the object when it gets flipped. On this loop, try to get the photos roughly every 10 degrees, so about 36 picks on a full loop. It may take a few tries to get a feel for doing this. Then it's time to get the upward facing side. You can either do some more loops at different heights or shoot arches over the top. I'm going to shoot two arches that cross at right angles in the middle and then another two going from corner to corner, making a total of four equidistant arches. Here we are in Reality Capture and if you haven't opened Reality Capture before, the first screen you'll see is this help screen here. We're going to change the layout in the top left corner here. If you go along to one plus one and click it, you get a view with a 1DS view here on the left and a 2D view here on the right. I'm going to change this 2D view to a 3DS by clicking and holding, dragging down to 3DS and releasing. And here's my 3D view. We need to get our images in now under the workflow tab, under add imagery, click inputs, and then navigate to your images. Now, when I took the images from the two different sides, I put them in two folders, side one and side two. After the flip, we'll start on side one, click on one of the images, and then do control A to select all of the images in the folder, and then open and 94 images have come into the project. We need to align them now. Under the Alignment tab, Registration, click Align Images. And now Reality Capture is figuring out where all the cameras are and making a sparse point cloud. There we go, it managed to align 94 out of 94 cameras you can see in this component in the 1DS here. And if I right click and drag in the 3DS here, I can rotate around the sparse point cloud and the cameras. If I left click, I can move from left to right. And if I hold down control and left click, I can move up and down. Rolling the mouse wheel will zoom in and out. So this box around my sparse point cloud here is the reconstruction region and when you're meshing everything inside that box will be meshed. Now you can see it has this gizmo here and you can move it up and down with the straight line parts and you can rotate it with the curved parts. So it seems to be nicely in line 
So what I'm going to do is just move in the sides of the reconstruction region using these dots. They click and drag the dots and you can adjust it. Now I'll make it a little bit bigger than the box because later I'm going to show you how to delete the bits you don't want. Um, we're just making this project to make some masks. Now what the masks will do will make Reality Capture ignore everything other than the radio itself in the alignment. And we'll use a very quick model to do that. And I'll just show you that in a second. So let's make the quick model. We've adjusted our reconstruction region and we go to mesh model. And this preview model here is very fast. It just connects all of the dots in your sparse point cloud. So let's click preview. And that was in real time. So there we go, we've got a very crude model, which is good for making masks, but we need to get rid of everything in the background as that is the purpose of the mask. So I'm going to show you the tools for that. So click on your 3DS and make sure it's surrounded by this blue highlight here, and then go to scene 3D, tools, and in the mesh model section here, you can click on lasso. Now the lasso tool works just as it would in any other program. I'm going to click and drag and then when I release you can see that all the triangles I've selected have gone orange. So I'm going to right click to rotate and go around to the side here and if I hold down control I can add to the selection with the lasso. So I will click and drag and select those triangles also. You can see they turn orange and then the same again on every side. There, so I've selected all the triangles at the bottom there, but I'll also select the ones on this little cable here. Now, if you wanted to change what you've selected um, and didn't want to select some of these triangles, you can hold down Shift and then select the triangles. Um, but I do want those triangles, so I'm going to hold down Control and get them back again. I just wanted to show you that. Okay, so when you've got all your triangles you want to delete orange, you can get rid of them by going up to the Mesh Model section here and clicking on Filter Selection. Okay, great. Now, this model I have here is perfect for making the masks, so it's time to export those masks. So again, Mesh Model tab, and in the Export section, click on Export Depth and Mask and you want to put them in the same folder as the images which they're supposed to mask so that's correct so side one select folder and the default is actually to export depths and mask but we do not want depths we just want the masks so make sure that this is not on yes which is the default make sure it's on no to not export your depths and then click ok Okay, fantastic. Now this project has done everything you want because all we wanted was those masks. If you weren't making a complete object, then you probably wouldn't have meshed in preview detail. You could have meshed in normal detail and then textured. You can skip to those parts of the video later if you're not um, using masks to stick two sides of an object together. Um, you can just continue from this point on. So let's start a new project new there and do not save that you don't need it anymore and I'll show you a different way to get your images into reality capture you can just find them in uh, oh there's the masks from side one you can see and the original images and if we go to side two you can actually just drag and drop from file explorer uh, straight into reality capture you can see we've got a few more images on side two 112 images and again Go to alignment and click align. And you can see this one's actually aligned on its side, um, which is quite good because that gives me an opportunity to show you another tool. Now, if your alignment is not oriented how you would like, uh, you can go up to Scene 3D Tools and then over on the left hand side here under Scene Alignment, you can click on Set Ground Plane and you get this gizmo here. And oh, I can flip it over. 
or we can go up to scene 3d view and change the view camera to top that's nicely aligned on the top and then go to left you can see it's not very nicely aligned left make that nice and straight and then we can go to the front and that's also not very nicely aligned but there we go I think that's going to be good we'll go back to the perspective view here and there we go that's looking good so let's go back to scene 3d tools and switch off the set ground plane now you can see our reconstruction region has gone a bit wonky so let's just click set reconstruction region here in the same section actually let's set our ground plane a little bit higher because you can see we've got a bit above and below the grid there so we'll go back to set ground plane and you can see we can just lift it up here with this little handle there there we go so it's above the grid you can see what we're doing a bit better and click it off so uh I'm going to show you a different way to filter out the triangles you don't want so we'll do the same as before and reconstruct roughly the same amount of stuff as we did previously in preview mode so change your reconstruction region and then mesh model and make a preview model very very fast in real this is in real time and there we go and this time um, we're going to get the model we want using the cut by box tool so again click on your 3ds scene 3d tools and go get to the cut by box tool in the mesh model section and now we need to adjust our box so we just have what we want inside the box let's get a bit finer get a bit closer on that angle there to get rid of the wire and lift up the bottom there we go and if we click here on cut outer it will get rid of everything that is not inside that box there so that's a little bit easier way of doing what we did before and there we have another model um, ready to make some masks from these images with so again mesh model export depth of mask and this time we don't want to put it inside one we'll navigate to side two select folder and these settings are good we're not exporting the depths so okay okay great now we no longer need this project so we can go to up here click on the reality capture logo and click new again and no let's not save that so let's just have a look inside our folders side one there we have the radio there and I'm sorting by type um, so there we go we got PNGs with the masks in there you can have a look on side two you've got the masks next to each image so we can use the drag and drop method again but this time we're going to bring in both sides with their masks and the masks means that everything in the background is going to be ignored so we can align the radio to itself um, with both sides so let's drag and drop those two sides in we've got 206 images I'll just get rid of this and we can align those together okay great there is our alignment we managed to drop only four cams um, from the whole thing but our sparse point cloud looks really really nice there uh, there's one more thing I'd like to show you if we change this 3ds into a 2d that way we can look at the images and here we go we've got a nice front on view of the radio right there now once that's clicked on and it's surrounded by blue what you can do is you can press tab and there you can see our mask now you can see that the great thing about this mask is is nothing which is uh, darker um, is seen in the alignment so all of these things can align together um, from the top and the bottom sides I'll go back to a 3ds view and we can oh let's just adjust our reconstruction region here we'll just make it more in line just rotate it a little bit there just make sure it's a bit tighter on each side but we should the mask should also work on meshing so nothing should mesh 
um, that isn't actually here. Okay, we'll pull it on those sides. Okay, now this time we're not going to use a preview mesh and this is going to take quite a lot longer. We're going to mesh in normal detail. So mesh model and click normal detail here. And once it's finished meshing, uh, you should have a far better mesh than what you got from the preview. Now we've got our meshed model, all the different sides here, and we can texture it. Now, if you like, we have an unwrap tool so that you can unwrap beforehand. Um, the default is to make a single texture with the maximal texture count style, um, and it will aim for this top number maximal texture resolution so the default is to make a single 8k texture now if you have a larger model with more inputs you might want to use fixed textile size here and set to optimal and that's going to give you a hundred percent quality on your unwrap I'm just going to change this back to the default and we'll go into the texture settings here and you can see we also have unwrap settings here. Now, if your model was already unwrapped using the unwrap tool, then these default unwrap parameters will be ignored. So we're actually just going to use the texture button. We're just going to use these default settings. So we should be aiming for a single HK texture and we're going to be using the visibility based style. So just click texture. And there we go. That is the basics of using Reality Capture. You can see we have a pretty nice looking texture there and our final model. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.